tomorrow in just 13 hours, Veeam V10 is coming out. And today I'm going to focus this video on the agent install process. And as a Veeam Vanguard, actually I talk a little bit about that trip here. Um, one of the perks is you get early access to code. I'll also mention the server. The system that I have Windows running on right now is this motherboard. And uh, I'll show you the remote desktop connection to that system in a moment. The NAS that I'm backing up to is right here. All right, and then finally a little bit more about the system here, the Gigabyte motherboard has IPMI and I've turned it on, all that. Here's the Synology NAS I mentioned, and it's gonna be a little degraded in performance because it's doing a um, uh, checking parity consistency uh, task because uh, I just created the volume that we're gonna back up to. That's okay, this isn't really gonna be a speed test today. I've done this before, like backing up from one NVMe drive to another. Today's about the functionality. So let's get started with the functionality. And there's that network share I was mentioning. All right, so remember I mentioned I have a remote desktop connection? Here it is. Great, this is the machine we're gonna back up, Gigabyte system I was telling you about. And how about I hit Windows plus E key, bring up Explorer and let's have a look how much storage is on this guy. How much storage is used, I should say, about 113 gig. So this is going to be a pretty sizable backup. And you'll notice I have everything showing in the system tray. Oh, other than that, all right. Now I have everything showing in the system tray. And I even have a little task manager. Let's kind of call that our, our, our you know, sense of how busy the CPU is during this install process. We'll be able to kind of keep tabs on things like I like to do during these videos. All right, so I've already downloaded Veeam Agent. And I'm going to go ahead and launch the executable. And this process doesn't look that different than the version 3 versions you might be used to, but I found the seamless upgrade to 4.0 pretty darn good. No database issues, really nothing to do other than just run the installer. Now, if you wait a little bit after the GA date, probably later February, I'm guessing, you'll be able to update right from within your Veeam Agent 3. something to go to the latest version. But um, early days, you're probably going to need to download 4 manually and just install it from there. So we can close that window now. I'm going to go ahead and install. Okay, in my case, I'm not backing up to an external USB drive. I'm going to back up to a network share. Hit next. And now it offers the Veeam recovery media step. This is crucial. I highly recommend you go ahead and do that. Um, Creating the ISO and making it bootable, or, or actually making a USB drive bootable recovery process, that hasn't really changed substantially. Um, and I have videos, actually more than one video, uh, covering that. So this is going to be focused just on that first backup and the 4.0, uh, 4.x install experience. So yes, I'm going to go ahead and run the wizard. And what I'm going to do is just let it make the ISO. And that only took about, was it two, three minutes? We look at the clock here carefully and the CPU wasn't particularly taxed. So I can easily use my workstation while that install happened. This is a pretty fresh machine though. And you know me, I like to dig under the covers just a little bit. Let's see what happened here. So what do we see installed on this machine? All right. Um, so if we look at Windows, this is what a Windows 1909 install looks like. I got Camtasia on there and um, I was doing a bit of video editing on this machine, just testing out the speed. Um, and then the image, of course, when we click on it, we'll see the version right there. All right. So the um, runtime and database, not noticeable from here, really. Let's uh, move right back to the wizard and follow along with that. Okay, so it's offering to make an ISO image. Cool. And I'm gonna leave it alone. Install the network develop adapter, the driver, so that if I want to restore in this machine, I'll be able to see a network share. Absolutely. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Now, encryption is a whole other topic. And I would encourage you to do encryption. Notice it uses the host name, this desktop that I'm RDP to. Um, and remember, I mentioned we're on 1909 here. Despite what it says in the bottom right, the wallpaper is wrong. It's a little bug there in Windows. But anyhow, we're on build 1909, absolutely. Just a local folder. So just hit next. 
and let her rip. Now here's a nice little tip. You might be the uh, impatient type. You like to get work done and focus on the task at hand and not have to go back and do something else for two, three minutes while it's creating this. So what you can do is just hit the start button and just start typing. Now you might have seen there were some green icons already showing, but uh, yeah, I can just run Veeam Agent from Microsoft Windows. Would I like to install a license file? Heck yes, I like backups to happen even if my network connection's down, if I'm on a laptop or a portable machine, I tend to say uh, yes to the workstation version when possible rather than the free version. Um, when traveling, uh, pretty cool that your laptop can do a daily backup and recover files from it all. And when it connects to a network share again or your VPN into your home network, it'll get that daily backup resumed very quickly because it's been doing daily backups all along just to a local drive rather than over a network. Did you follow all that? All right. <laughs> so let me just take a moment to install the license file. Hmm. Grayed out for workstation at the moment. Interesting. Okay, so once you get a legit key in there, we're good to go. And that's it. Okay, notice it says recovery media has not been created. That's true. It's still working on that over on the right side, right side there. Okay. That's not going to happen while you have the product running another window here. All right, it's still gray, so let's just close that. Now, what do we have here in our tray? We've got Veeam, cool. All right, like a normal person <laughs> who does things sequentially, you end up with a tray icon when you're done. It's got a little question mark on it, gets my attention, so if I double click on the tray icon, nice. It scans for stuff to back up to um, and what to back up. So that's the way to do it, just let it finish. A little smoother experience there. Okay, I'm gonna leave that job name alone. I'm gonna back up the entire computer and I'm going to a network share. All right, I happen to have the network share on my clipboard here on my other screen. So that's my Synology name. That's my Veeam Backups folder, but you wanna populate it. You wanna make sure it's working by clicking that groovy populate button there. And there you go. 17.4 terabytes. That should do, given I have only 113 gigabytes to back up. <laughs> okay. Um, we can crank up the number of days. Highly recommend going to advanced. And remember what I mentioned about some of the settings here? Let's go through them from left to right. I am not going to touch those. You can read here. It gives you a good sense of what's going on here. Maintenance, I'm actually going to also leave alone, but some of these features are new, so if you haven't seen 4.0 before, or for any 4.x version, this might be new to you. Okay, this is pretty cool. So it can do health checks on a regular basis. And then finally, storage. Okay. I always encrypt. Next, backup cache. This is a cool feature I told you that's available in Workstation where it'll do a backup no matter what. Love that. So we go to the C drive, make a new folder, and give it a pretty evident name like that. It should work. And then pick a size accordingly. So if you're regularly editing video files that are, you know, 100 gig in size, well, you need to crank that up. I'm going to leave 10 alone for this particular workstation. It's going to do it daily, 12.30 a.m. And this machine doesn't have S3 states like a full laptop would. So we're going to skip past that warning and run the job when finished. Heck yeah. Why not? All right, and let her rip. So now we can look at CPU because that's what I like to do. I like to look at how uh, a product works when I run it. It's part of the part, point of these videos. So what is it doing? Well, this is going to be very much like the other videos I've done covering backup products, including Veeam. And that is not a whole lot going on with the network share yet. 
it's preparing, it's looking, uh, there's change block tracking. So this is our very first backup. So it's a little different than watching a regular backup. And we're on a Samsung 970 Evo. This is a NVMe drive. So speedy local drive here. So very low on CPU utilization. If we were on a spinning drive, you might see a little different performance here. Um, and then when the backup actually starts, you'll see some bits start flying at a more substantial speed on the ethernet wire there. And over in the network share, you'll see evidence of that stuff landing. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, we're back, not in remote desktop, we're now in the Synology NAS. And we've got this folder. And let's have a look at how the Veeam backups folder is looking. Okay, we've got a job going here. And it's only 25 meg in size. So we hit refresh. Not really growing with much speed yet. All right, so remember I told you it's got some work to do before the backup really gets going and hitting the wire. All right, let's watch the Ethernet go. Ah, you just saw the disk spike a little there. See that? So even an NVMe drive, very briefly, was hit a little bit hard. And now we're hitting the network. This is a one gigabit network, I'll point that out. Uh, I wish I had the 10 gig going for the purposes of this video. That Synology does have a 10 gig. It's a choice between a SSD for caching, which I don't currently have, or 10 gig. But anyhow, this will give you a pretty good idea of the speed without me... Um, you know, focusing on speed, as I mentioned earlier, that's not the point of this test. Functionality. I've shown you all the functionality now. You now know how to create a daily backup and, of course, install the product. That was super easy. Uh, if nothing else, you should get the vibe here that in well under 10 minutes uh, between downloading, installing the license key, answering a few little wizard questions and kicking off the backup and walking away for the night, or just using your workstation because this is only four core machines. pretty modest with hyperthreading. It shows eight. You can use this machine. This utilization is low. It could be rendering 4K videos right now, or use, you know, whatever. So that's the point here that um, very lightweight, quick, easy install. That's how Veeam has impressed many people for many years now. Okay, bringing this video in for a landing. Um, if you right click on this screen, you can change to this. So you'll see we've been backing up for almost three minutes. And let's head back to Task Manager and see how that's doing. And the Ethernet wire is staying nice and smooth. One more peek at Synology. Hit refresh over here. There we go. <laughs> We're almost at 8 gig size. So this thing is flying. And that's even with the Synology doing some sort of background task here. But actually the Synology NAS doesn't look bad. 25 gig. Sorry. 25%. <laughs> it's been a long day. Uh, ooh, 27%. All right. Back to RDP. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let that finish. Call it a wrap. Put out this quick video for folks to get a taste of 4.x. If they haven't tried it yet or haven't decided what they're doing with, you know, free or workstation. Um, there'll be a whole lot of bloggers talking about V10 tomorrow. And um, I wish I had a chance to get my hands on this code a little earlier. Actually, the code was available to me, but the more recent build is the one I was interested in, not the one um, a month plus ago. So uh, this should accurately reflect what you're going to see in the GA level product. And other videos have already covered, like enable email notifications. I've gone through all these buttons many times. Those have not changed. Things like enable email notification and uh, setting up a Gmail account to allow that through and so forth. Hit the about screen here and you'll see that I am up to date. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when I click that button now and tomorrow and two weeks from now where I might get a later point release at some point. And hopefully you soon are able to upgrade your 3.x to 4.x. And I would encourage you to double check the version of Windows you're on is supported right now in kind of a funny state in that, um, well, when 1909 first came out, it wasn't supported with the 3.x version that was out there. So you'll always want to watch out for that. The lag, uh, the delay before support for a new version of Windows is pretty short now, these days with Veeam. But um, you always want to be aware of that. Nothing in my video, you know, supersedes that. Notice how I got back to the backup progress window. Pretty much everything right in there. Very simple UI, right? I think you, I think you already figured that out. Okay. 
You don't need to watch that UI. You can even click X. It's not like, oh no, I just broke my backup. It's still working. Hover your mouse over there and it shows what percent's done. All right, it's a little while later. And I kicked off a second backup. And the disk got busy. and actually just scrolled off for a few seconds. And then the network got busy. And now it's wrapping up. The network is not busy anymore. It's just doing some sort of house clipping. And you'll see that subsequent backups after that first backup are way faster. Change it to duration. Hover your mouse over it. And pretty cool, right? You click on it for details. There you go. So if you want all the nerdy details, they're there for you. At any point, you can close that, bring them right back up. I double click in here. Here's the first backup job. It even tells you the speed over the wire. Here's the subsequent backup job. And that's what daily backups will look like. Tiny and speedy. Two minutes, 35 seconds. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching and thanks for visiting. Tinker Try, IT at home. I really appreciate it. Bye now.